Hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, tuning in to our uh, the Contigo Technology CMMC webinar series. Today, we're going to go through uh, episode two as we track through uh, 10 of these uh, webinars where we discuss different aspects of uh, CMMC. Uh, if you are uh, attending, uh, we don't really need to describe uh, the, the acronym CMMC. We've seen this out on the horizon for some time, so you, you know uh, what's what's coming and and the ecosystem uh, that um, it's uh, making all of us play in. And we're real excited today to go on to the second episode where we're really focusing on what's required to get a level one certification and, and talk about those steps. And, uh, you know, I, we, we, JD, who is a CMMC registered practitioner and employee of Contigo Technology, we're happy to have him. He's going to walk through these steps and, uh, and talk about why you don't want to really overlook getting a level one certification. So, JD, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, let you get started. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. So, like you said, welcome to um, our web series. This is our second uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about the level one certification today. Um, we did have a previous webinar uh, where we went into the uh, basically the introduction of what the cybersecurity maturity model certification is. Um, if you missed that webinar, you can view it on our web page under the governance, risk, and compliance tab or on our YouTube channel. Um, and I believe Brian will. Uh, post that link to the chat here in just a second for you all that uh, might have missed the first one. Um, in that webinar, we touched on the CMMC controls, uh, the 17 domains that make up the CMMC, the 171 practices, uh, did a brief overview of what that looks like. Uh, we talked about the CMMC timeline, uh, so where we're at right now with the implementation of it, um, the different pilot programs that are happening, uh, just again, a brief overview of that. Uh, what is needed for certification, what the process looks like, um, and then ultimately how to start. Um, you know, uh, I know that my company needs to get the certification, so where do I move from here? Uh, so again, if you guys missed that, you can check that out under our webpage or uh, from the link posted in the chat. So let's get started. So level one requirement, considered basic cyber hygiene. So again, just as it sounds, basic uh, cyber hygiene. Uh, none of these controls are in uh, too in-depth, and a majority of them are already included um, in the DFARS rule that companies have already stated um, that they're implementing. So the 17 security controls across six different domains. For access control, you have four practices. Identification and authentication, you have two practices. Media protection, you'll have one. Physical protection, there will be four. Uh, system and communication protection, there'll be two. And system and information integrity, there will be four. So again, combined for all of those, that will be 17 total practices. So again, under the old process of the DFARS rule um, and the self-attestation of NIST 800-171, companies were basically saying, yes, I uh, am completing these practices. They'll do a uh, basically a self-assessment of what they are. Are we doing them? Yes or no. Um, and basically just say, uh, to the government, tell the government or the contracting officer, yes, we are doing what we're supposed to do. Again, we touched on this in the first webinar uh, where there was an issue uh, with 10 of the biggest primes being audited and nine of them failing. So again, this is why we are now moving into the new process of maturity. So each company will start with level one, um, finish those requirements, move on to level two, uh, finish those requirements, move to level three, so on and so forth. So uh, really, again, the, the major part of this is that it is comprehensive. So you can't get to level two, three, four, or five without first starting with level one. So uh, I, I want to make this very clear from the get-go. Uh, the accreditation body has said this many times as well. Um, but for these individual practices um, required for CMMC, uh, this is just this is not just an Excel spreadsheet of yes and no's. Uh, they want to make sure that you're actually receiving help from a reputable source uh, because there is a lot to digest. Uh, we'll touch on that um, a little bit later, but first let's talk about um, our scope. So what is the scope? Before starting into the security controls, a company needs to map out its federal contract information data flow. So basically federal contract information, as uh, some of us or all of us know, comes from the DFARS 52204-21. 
Um, and it's any information not intended for public release that is provided by or generated for the government under a contract to develop or deliver a product or service to the government. Uh, this does not include things like public websites or transactional information, such as necessary to process payments. So uh, the accreditation body has said this is the most crucial aspect of the model itself. Um, as we'll talk in our later uh, webinar series of level three certification and what is required for CUI uh, or controlled unclassified information, level one just deals with federal contract information. So the organization seeking certification basically needs to understand the information they receive and who all is receiving that information, where it's being stored. So for a real, real world uh, example, let's say you have company ABC who um, is saying, I am requiring this, uh, let's just say a metal box. Uh, for this metal box, they will go into contract with a subcontractor. The subcontractor will say, I will build these metal boxes for you. So that contract information, everything that's listed in that contract, how many boxes, um, so on and so forth, names, things like that, um, will all be part of that FCI. So as a company who is dealing with ABC company, they will say, I will keep all this information safe by following these certain practices of CMMC. Uh, that's the gist of it. So from there, the company that's working for ABC company to build this box says, we actually implement the, the building of the box. Uh, we create the sides, the top and bottom of the box, but there's a uh, lift mechanic to the top of the box that is needed. We don't build that. So they will go into contract with another subcontractor um, who will build uh, that piece. So every little piece uh, of the pie that comes together to create the overall product uh, from the original contract is considered FCI. So just because a company starts with um, maybe a page or two of FCI, the more uh, the data flows down, the more FCI is being created. So this is gearing, uh, again, all clients for level three certification, um, but it is heavily required um, for level one itself, just knowing the, the FCI data flow. Um, again, this is one of the most crucial aspects, the accreditation body, the CMC, CMMC accreditation body has said it many times, you've got to know your data flow. Uh, when it's time for the assessment, you've got to come in and prove uh, that you know exactly where it's coming from, where it's being stored and who you're transmitting it to. Um, so Katie, let's go I, through. Katie, can I ask you a question real quick? I thought this was interesting feedback you gave us. Uh, so for for y'all um, who um, I didn't I didn't uh, give too much on on JD's background as we did on the first webinar, but JD is a <coughs> CMMC registered practitioner, but he's very active and he's on a peer group and um, and and he's uh, and the peer group is led by a actual CMMC assessor. And on that uh, peer group, oftentimes you'll see the likes of uh, Reagan Edens, who's on the CMMC uh, accreditation body. So he gets to see and be in the middle of conversations from, from his point of view, which uh, JD is a registered practitioner, which is the role of, of helping companies prepare to get in a posture where uh, they can call in the assessor to give them the approval on a level one. And so JD is, uh, you know, very much trying to make sure that he's on the same page with the assessors and the accreditation body. So he he has a, a lot of a good knowledge. I think he's 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 knee deep in the in the in, in that whole world. Uh, JD, when when you give that example of the downflow of of uh, subcontractors and subcontractors and subcontractors, in that example, the people who made the top of the box, for them to to bid, they've got to be a level one. Uh, just as the as a contractor above them was uh, a, a level one, but correct. You're you're in, in the webinar one. You talked about the timelines in which everybody is going to have to be uh, have to have a level one approval, and you mentioned that uh, it's okay for companies to go get their level one status, and it might give them a competitive advantage. Can you expand on that and what you may have heard uh, in the groups that you're a part of? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you are correct. Uh, anything um, from the prime contract all the way down to subcontractors, um, the accreditation body is still working on where that um, split will come. So let's say the first contract uh, starts out and there is CUI um, on that. So everyone who touches that contract is going to have to be level three certified. Now, the lower you go down that flow or that data flow, uh, you might get into something that's more, you know, I'm not touching CUI at all. So where's that break between level one, level three? 
Now, the interesting part about what uh, your question is, is that when a contractor is going to um, basically award the uh, a contract with the subcontractors, uh, everyone that's bidding on it uh, will have different levels. Uh, there will always be a level one certification required for each contract. Um, but to, based off of how well or how thought out you've, you've been in your process um, or where you're at in your certification, uh, will give you a competitive advantage for winning that contract. Um, whether you are level one certified and you're going up against um, some other companies that are on the process to get to level three, so they're actually at level two, um, they will go ahead and uh, award that contract to the level two company before the level one company. So let's get into the uh, specifics. Uh, we don't have enough time to go through all 17 practices. Um, of course, that's going to be what your registered practitioners and um, registered provider uh, providing organizations are for. I'll touch on that a little bit later, but I do want to give us one example uh, just so our viewers here can kind of understand the process of what we have to go through for each one of the practices um, of CMMC. So, excuse me, for example, we'll go through media protection. Uh, so media protection, there's only one for level one, only one practice required. It's going to be media protection 1.118. And it says sanitize or destroy information systems, media containing federal contract information before disposal or release for reuse. So just looking at that, that's all the, um, if you use the assessment guide, um, that's all it's going to really say. That's all it's going to tell you. Um, the issue with that and what the accreditation body has seen is that, okay, media is a very broad term that can refer to multiple things. And just an example, I have uh, written down paper documents, discs, tapes, hard drives, solid state drives, USBs, CDs, uh, you know, you get the point. So the, the very broad term of media is, okay, what exactly does my organization use as far as media? Um, how do I keep that safe? How do I even know what, what that term means to me? Um, so again, this is playing into the uh, organization seeking certification, needs to understand its data flow to know where the FCI is located. Um, again, a lot of companies aren't just doing business with the government. They're also doing um, commercial grade um, to where they don't have to be in contract. They don't have to have uh, the security levels that are needed for um, the specific CMMC contract uh, or certification, excuse me. So for this, uh, for this control and this practice, you should consider if all managed data storage is erased, encrypted, or destroyed using mechanisms to ensure that no usable data is retrievable. Now, what the uh, accreditation body has done with uh, the implementation of CMMC um, is they have gone through and they basically listed out references. So uh, where exactly did they pull this specific practice from? So as you can see, this referenced in the FAR clause 52204.21b1 uh, VII or seven, uh, and I'm not gonna read them all off, but as you can see there, they're pulling from a host of different regulations or special publications. Um, that basically will give you um, what is the necessary requirement. So just because it is stated in a broad term um, and it is required, they will uh, give you references to kind of get into uh, the depth of, okay, what exactly is, uh, is media protection? What exactly is my media? Um, and I will tell you the most commonly used is uh, the special, special publication 800-53 uh, that talks a lot about um, securing your technology uh, from a company. So from that standpoint, um, when you move into your assessment, uh, to prove that you are compliant with each practice, you must have two forms of evidence from the three accepted. Uh, so you've got examine, interview, and test. Uh, for examine, you're going to have things like your policies, your system security plans, uh, your written procedures, any kind of records, documentation, uh, anything that really says this, uh, you know, from a from a policy standpoint, from a written standpoint, this is what we do to keep this safe. Um, uh, the second one can be interviews. So you're gonna, uh, your personnel will be interviewed by the assessors, uh, whoever has um, responsibility with the sanitation or system or network admins, um, any kind of personnel with information security responsibilities uh, within the organization seeking certification. Uh, we'll go through an interview process. They'll be asked questions. Um, basically, you have to prove this is how we are accomplishing this, uh, this practice. Uh, the third one and final one is uh, organizational processes for media sanitation. So uh, if you say we have um, this outsourced, this is what we do. We place it in this bin. It's locked. 
Um, they come in, they, you know, go destroy it or whatever they might do to recycle it. We get a certificate of destruction, whatever it might be, you can just run through. This is basically the, uh, the procedure that we use to accomplish this. So again, you have to have two out of the three, uh, can't be one. Uh, you can have all three if you want, but um, only two uh, is required. So again, I, I wanna stress that this has to be done for each control in each domain for the required level uh, that the OSC is being assessed for. So for level one, you've got 17 practices that you have to implement and you need to prove through these two forms for each one. So that's a total of 34 total proofs needed for a CMNC level one certification. So preparing for the assessment, I wanna go through um, the CMMC hierarchy. Uh, some of you probably know the process and who all is involved. Uh, of course, I've been throwing this term around all day, but CMMC accreditation body, they are the ones who came in, uh, created what we now have as the model itself. They're the ones that are doing the revisions. Uh, they're the ones that have pushed out all the training. They pushed out all of the um, assessors. If you have any questions at all, um, obviously the, they're the top tier, they're gonna know what they're talking about. Uh, from them, they move into uh, certifying a certified third-party assessor organization. This is the company that's gonna come in and actually do the assessment itself. Uh, they can only be certified through the accreditation body. Um, so there, there is a very structured tier to that. It's not just a, I, uh, my company went out and decided to uh, become certified all of a sudden. It's, it's a rigorous process you have to go through. Uh, right now in the United States, I believe there's only around uh, 20, maybe, maybe 30. Um, and that number obviously is always changing. Um, but from there, you go into a registered uh, provider organization. That's going to be a company like Contigo. Uh, what we do here is um, basically help our clients uh, prep for that assessment. So when uh, a client says, hey, I know that I'm going to need a certification. I have no idea how to prep for it. I don't even know what it is really. Um, you know, where do I go? Where do I go to for help? Um, you're going to go to an RPO. Um, the, the issue and what the CMMC accreditation body has said is the moment you get a certified third party assessor organization in and what the process they do is they'll come in and do a pre-assessment. If at any point in that pre-assessment, they know for sure, Hey, you guys aren't going to pass. They will not continue that on, but they will charge you, um, an initial fee, um, in total, uh, what we're seeing for full certification, even for a level one, is anywhere from uh, ten to thirty thousand um, dollars per uh, per assessment. So if they come in and they assess you to completion and you did not pass, that's ten to thirty thousand dollars that you just paid. That uh, you now have to say, okay, well, what did I? Where did I go wrong? How do I fix it? If the C three PAO does not complete the assessment they uh, cannot tell you how to fix or what, uh, what is wrong um, in completion. So they'll do a pre-assessment again, if they come in and say, you know, you can't tell me what FCI is, you don't know your data flow, they're gonna charge a, a hefty fee for that. And then they're gonna say, go find an RPO, go find a reputable source that's gonna help you uh, through this process. Um, and then from there, an RPO uh, straight down to a registered practitioner uh, like myself, we are the ones who uh, have been trained through the accreditation body. Uh, we work for registered provider organizations. We are the ones that uh, are really in the trenches uh, talking through uh, the whole certification process with our clients, um, with OCSs saying, uh, this is exactly what is gonna be asked. And again, as Brian was touching on earlier, uh, I am a part of some peer groups and I think that is very beneficial, um, not just for uh, Contigo in general, but really we wanna know what exactly are the C3POs looking for when they go to do an assessment? What exactly did the CMMC accreditation body mean by this or that? And that peer group, again, uh, from a monthly standpoint, we'll go through different changes that have been made. We've gone through, um, again, the specific requirements of practices, what they mean, what they don't mean. Um, so it's very, very valuable for, uh, for a company and an organization to uh, to pair up with an RPO um, and, and start talking to their RP, RPs uh, about the certification itself. Because again, by the end of 2025, it will be listed on every single contract for the government. Uh, there's going to be no uh, allowances. You must be certified or you will not be able to, to uh, bid on any contracts. So as far as scheduling an assessment, there's really two main ways to reach a C3PAO. 
uh, you're going to go directly so you can reach out to a known C3PAO um, and set up a, a pre-assessment time for yourself. Um, again, what is nice is, um, for instance, like uh, Contigo being an RPO ourselves, uh, we have known C3PAOs that we are um, in talking with. It's all part of that peer group. So uh, we have a, a strategic advantage of, hey, this is a client of ours. We know exactly what this assessor is asking for. Uh, you know, it's just going to better your chances for passing that certification. Um, and then the second one is indirectly. So you can reach out to the CMMC accreditation body. Uh, they will say what level you, are you trying to go for, and they will set you up with a local C3PAO. Uh, that was the only way uh, possible at the beginning. Uh, they really wanted to be careful that uh, companies weren't paying, you know, tens of thousands of dollars um, to, a, to a company that um, isn't actually a certified third-party assessing organization. Um, they were really re weary of the fraud aspect of that. Um, but because it is such a named thing now, uh, there, there are, um, like I said, a, a good amount of C3PAOs. A lot of people are, are talking about it. Um, they went ahead and allowed that you can, you can reach out to one on your own now. Um, so that's really what level one certification is like. Again, uh, I know we only got to briefly touch on um, just the media protection aspect of it, but for each one of those controls, there is, there is a lot to it. And again, I wanna be very, very clear. Uh, I am not an expert. Um, I am a registered practitioner. That is what the CMMC accreditation body has said. Uh, we are still in terms of, um, in the terms of certification, they don't have assessors out there yet. No company has been certified yet. Um, if somebody is coming to you saying, yes, I'm an expert, I've done certifications before, um, you can know that they are not telling the truth because that is just not where we're at right now. Um, so the accreditation body wants us to, to state that specifically. Um, and from there, uh, you know, that is our, that concludes our webinar. So, so JD, thanks for that. That was very insightful. And I, I'll just add uh, a couple of uh, uh, my perspectives. So Contigo, we think uh, we offer a, a really unique advantage in helping our clients go through the CMMC process. You know where where most registered practitioners are. Uh, you know uh, their 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 skill set may vary on what their expertise are. What what Contigo brings in, in alongside you know having a registered practitioner is we are an IT management company. So we approach the CMMC process by not only having a registered practitioner but having our registered practitioner work with our IT team so that we can look deeper into the, the, the technical posture that a company might have and know how to uh, um, configure uh, certain items so that they are in a positive way aligning with uh, CMMC or knowing that there isn't a gap, there is a gap and how to explain that gap. So we've had a lot of success uh, with that, that method. You know, one thing JD didn't, didn't mention I think is very important is you know, I was at a couple of those peer meetings and what I heard that really uh, that had a lot of weight to it was, look, a lot of the a lot of the companies are going to want to go after a level three and the level three. And once we get to that webinar, you will see that there's a lot more teeth in trying to accomplish a level, level three certification. The, the the members of that peer group, the assessors were very much uh, leaning into the idea that Companies should not bypass getting their level one. They should not bypass getting a level two. They should really, they should really start small and, and, and build up on their level certification. So, you know, we have a couple of clients now who uh, we've spoken to about that and we're working with them. They're going to look for a level three or level four. And um, we are starting out with, you know, small building blocks of, well, let's get the level one certification prepped up. Let's start looking at it through that light where by the time we go in and we're trying to help you get to that level four, level five, you um, we're confident that we've already uh, put the level one foundation in place. We're not we're not sitting there being assessed and hoping that all aspects of our of our work has uh, needs to be blessed. So. Um, I, I would say even for the larger companies that want to go level three, level four, level five, you still, you don't want to bypass level one. You want to get that, that certification. So um, we're signing off. So thank you everybody for joining. This is uh, this, the second one out of 10. 
Uh, Contigo Technology uh, is, is we're an Austin-based IT support and, and governance uh, company. If you would like to talk to us more about some of the, the services we offer, you can email JD directly or, or visit us online and you'll see our CMMC page and you can gather more information from there and also see uh, the past webinars. So um, we're signing off and uh, thanks and we hope to see everybody on uh, next month at the next uh, webinar. Thank you very much.